Newt Gingrich is a man that I've met several times. I've had dinner with him uh, when we were in Washington, D.C. He seems uh, like a very nice man. I, uh, we don't know. We, we're not buddies. Um, but I have uh, been around him enough to know that, you know, he's a he's an honest guy, a decent guy that uh, has always shot straight with me. I want to make sure that um, uh, you understand and that he understands that this is not a gotcha interview. I have serious concerns uh, with Newt Gingrich, um, but it's not a gotcha interview. This is just I'm asking questions because I truly, deeply care about the country just as much as Newt Gingrich does. But we differ on the answers, I believe. I'd like to have him convince me that I'm wrong. I would love to have him convince me that I'm wrong. Mr. Newt Gingrich, how are you, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm very good. Um, let's, start with, um, let's start with a piece of audio here um, where you were talking about health care, and you went down the progressive road with Theodore Roosevelt. And for government to not leave guarantees that you don't have the ability to change things. No private corporation has the purchasing power or the ability to reshape the health system. And in this sense, I guess I'm a Theodore Roosevelt Republican. In fact, if, if I were going to characterize my on health where I come from, I'm a Theodore Roosevelt Republican, and I believe government can lead and that regulatory leading is okay. R regulation and the government um, scares the crap out of me, uh, and I think most uh, Tea Party kind of uh, leaning uh, conservatives. And Theodore Roosevelt was the the guy who started the Progressive Party. How would you characterize your relationship with the progressive ideals of Theodore Roosevelt? Well, it depends on which phase of Roosevelt you're talking about. By 1912, he's become a big government, centralized power uh, advocate, running as a third-party candidate. Uh, but, for example, Roosevelt uh, advocated the Food and Drug Act after he was eating, and this is supposedly the story, after he was eating sausage and eggs while reading Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, which has a scene in which a man falls into a vat at the sausage factory and becomes part of the sausage. And uh, if you go back to that era where people had, it's a little bit like dealing with the Chinese, where people had uh, adulter, uh, they had doctored food, they had put all sorts of junk in food. They, you know, uh, I, as a child we lived in Europe, and I always marveled at the fact that American water is drinkable virtually anywhere. So there, there are minimum regulatory standards of, of public health and safety that are, I think, really important. Okay, so you're you're a minimum regulation guy on making sure that people don't fall into the vats of yeah. Look, what, what, what I'm against is the government trying to to implement things because bureaucracy is such a bad implementer, and I'm against government trying to pick winners and losers. I mean, there's no accident that the Smithsonian got fifty thousand dollars to invent the airplane and failed, and the from the Congress, and that the Wright brothers invented the airplane because. Okay. And so, the, so it all, but, but I do think, and I think almost everybody listening to us would agree, uh, you want to make sure, for example, if you buy certain electric things, uh, that they don't start fires in your house. Got and it. That's, okay. that, that kind of thing. But you're not into picking winners and losers, so you would not have done uh, the uh, GM uh, bailout. No. No. No, but, absolutely not. But, I, think, I, think they would have, I would think they would be better off today. Remember, you, you can have you can have a bankruptcy for reorganization, not for liquidation. Right, but you are. If they go through a reorganization bankruptcy, they'd have been much better off than they sure. are today. But you, but you have selected a winner when you are for uh, quite strongly the ethanol subsidies. Well, you know that's an interesting question. And when when Obama suggested eliminating the uh, fourteen billion dollar a year uh, incentive for exploring for oil and gas. Everybody in the oil patch who's against subsidizing ethanol jumped up and said, oh, you can't do that. If you do that, you're going to wipe out 80% of exploration, which is all done by small independent companies, not by the majors. I support it. I favor the incentive to go out and find more oil and gas. Now, that's a tax subsidy. It's a bigger tax subsidy than ethanol ever got. Uh, but I, I want American energy to drive out Saudi Arabian and Iranian and Iraqi energy and Venezuelan energy. Uh, and so I'm, I am for all sources of American energy in order to make us not just independent, but to create a reservoir so that if something does happen in the Persian Gulf or in the Straits of Hormuz, uh, the world's industrial system doesn't doesn't crash into a deep depression. Why would we? Why would we? Why would we go into subsidies though? Isn't aren't subsidies 
really some of the biggest problems that we have with our with our spending and out of control uh, picking of winners and losers? Well, it depends on, on what you're subsidizing. I mean, the the idea of having economic incentives for manufacturing goes back to Alexander Hamilton's first report of manufacturing, which I believe is 1791. We have we have always had a bias in favor of investing in the future. Uh, we built the transcontinental railroads that way. Uh, the Erie Canal was built that way. We, we've always believed that having a strong infrastructure and having a strong energy system are net advantages uh, because they made us richer and more powerful than any other country in the world. What, what I object to is subsidizing uh, things that don't work and things that aren't uh, uh, creating a better future. Uh, and, and the problem with the modern welfare state is it actually encourages people to the wrong behaviors. It encourages them not to work. It encourages them not to study. All right. Um, you said if you are a fiscal conservative who cares about balancing the federal budget, there may be no more important bill to vote on in your career than in support of this bill. This was what you said um, about, uh, about a new entitlement, Medicare prescription drug program. Which also included Medicare Advantage and also included... Uh, the uh, right to have a high deductible uh, medical savings account, which is the first step towards moving control over your health dollars back to you. Uh, and I think it was a very important uh, distinguishing point. On, on the drug benefit, my position is very straightforward. If you're going to have Medicare, which was created in 1965, and, and, and it was created at a time when, frankly, drugs didn't matter. There weren't very many breakthroughs at that point. Uh, to take a position that we won't help you with insulin, but we'll pay for your kidney dialysis, uh, is, an, is, is, is both bad at a human level and bad at a financial level. Kidney dialysis is one of the fastest growing centers of cost, and we spend almost as much annually on kidney dialysis as the entire National Institute of Health research budget. It's about $27 billion a year right now. Uh, if we say to you, we're going to pay for open heart surgery, but we won't pay for Lipitor so you can avoid open heart surgery. Uh, it's both bad at a level, uh, but it's also just bad financially. Aren't, aren't, so, but aren't, that, we, aren't you starting with a, a false premise here? If, we, if we're going to have uh, the uh, the Johnson Act, then, well, then we should do this. Isn't that starting with a false premise? Shouldn't we be going the other direction instead of building yes, on... Which is, why, which is why they had both Medicare Advantage, which is the first towards diversity and choice in Medicare, and it's why they put in the health savings account model, which is the first big step towards you being personally in charge of your own savings. Um, and I think that that's a – your point's right. The question is how do you manage the transition so it is, so it is politically doable? And, and By I, adding, but, but you believe – no offense, but you believe voting for something that is – you're trying to transition into smaller government – by also supporting a bill that has in it a, a gigantic giveaway? Well, you, you've already given away. And that's my point. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't see how one defends uh, not having um, the ability to avoid the requirement for surgery, which is what this is all about. And the question is, can you live longer and more independently and more healthily with um, the drug benefit than without it. And I think that if and, and you, you can make the argument, well, gee, we should abolish Medicare. Um, a, you won't, you won't win that in the short run, so you're going to have Medicare. And the question in the short run is, so do you want to have a system that basically leaves people uh, with bad outcomes, uh, or, do, or do you want to, in fact, maximize how long they can live and how, and how independently they can live? All right. Uh, and that's just a fundamental difference. GBTV. The truth lives here.